Hey there, everyone. I'm excited to be back here today. I am joined by Adam Pratt. He is a author, photographer, a digital photo curator. We're going to dive into that. Um, we're here to talk about decluttering your photos, and it's something that I know I've been thinking about lately as I look at my photo collection that I have in, in Lightroom and Apple Photos and scattered across various hard drives. Everybody's making more photos than ever. Um, Adam just wrote a book that his PR folks uh, sent me a copy of. I haven't been compensated for this interview in any way, but they did send me a copy of the book to check out. I'm excited to chat here with Adam. Welcome. Thank you for being here. And let's dive right in, right? So we're all making a ton of photos now. And whether it's, you know, a, a smartphone, a DSLR, a mirrorless camera, you know, why has this become so important? How is this a big deal that it's now, you know, a, a business and I and I keep hearing about it in different places? Yeah, yeah. Thanks for asking. And thanks for the invitation to be here. I've been looking forward to this. Um, I would say it, it goes back to why we take photographs, right? There's all sorts of reasons. And whether you're an amateur or professional, it varies. But I think at its core, we take most of our photos to capture memories, to tell stories, to relive events, to connect with people. And when we organize photos, you know, we go back way back, you know, in the late 1800s, early 1900s, you might have a couple of photographs per year or even per decade. Fast forward to like the 80s and 90s, you'd shoot a whole roll of film like in a day or a week or something like that. And now modern day with digital, we have a lot of clients that shoot 20 or 30,000 photos a year. And I'm not going to say that's good or bad, but it can just by the sheer numbers, it can be overwhelming. So if we don't right. it, if we don't take care of it, it's going to kind of be an avalanche on top of us. Yeah, I mean that's that's a great point. You know, as we record this, it's uh, November eighth. It's election day here in the United States, and I was looking at Instagram this morning, and a whole bunch of people are posting the you know I voted stickers. Right? They've either got them on them or they're they're holding up their sticker to show that they voted. Great, great social media content, kind of cool little way to memorialize the day. Right. But knowing that I was going to be chatting with you this morning, I also, in my head, I'm like, those probably aren't the photos that they're going to print out in the family album necessarily. No. What's going to happen with those kind of photos? You know, I feel like, obviously, we take photos that we know at the time of capture are going to be important, right? You know, my my child turned 18 over this last weekend, we had a birthday party, got some pictures of them, you know, blowing out the candles on the cake. Those are keepers, right? Obviously. But especially in the social media age, we take a lot of photos that, you know, I mean, I'll even be honest, I take lots of photos that like tomorrow, I don't care about it anymore. And I'm probably never, ever going to care about it again. Yep. Is this something that people need to be thinking about as they're capturing? Or can we just kind of, you know, willy nilly make as many photos as we want, because it's so easy and so awesome at this point, and then come back later to clean it up? Is this, you know, is this an ongoing thing? Or is this something I can check in with periodically? Yeah, it's a good question. I think it's a little bit of both. I think on one hand, I don't want to hinder anybody from shooting a lot, right? Like, part of digital is that we can shoot so much, we can be creative, we can experiment. I love it. We all love it. However, un, um, uncurated, it does become a burden. And so, and the reason I know that is because of the stuff we see from our clients when we organize photos. So when we see a photo library from a client and there is a burst mode of like 500 black shots in a row, just completely blacked out, obviously they've never even looked at their photos, right? So because if they had, they could they could delete those. That's not a hard curation process. Right, right. Just get the range, just throw them away. But they've shot so much, <clears throat> they're not even going back to look. And so in, in that case, I'd say we probably need to slow down our shooting a little bit. We also need to up our curation. But if we're shooting that much and we don't even realize it, um, I think we need to work on it on both ends. That's a good point. That's a good point. And I realize, you know, we kind of dove right into why this is important and getting into it. Um, let's just back up a second and you know why are you the guy right why did you write this book um you know 
I hadn't heard of you prior to reading the book, but as I read the book, it's like, oh, this guy is the perfect person to write this book. So why don't you just share a little bit about kind of your background, what you do professionally, um, sure. and what that brings to the table to this book, as opposed to being written by just some random photographer who has a bunch of photos. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So, um, you know, hindsight is always very clear. Um, I didn't expect that this is where I would end up. Uh, but when I look back, it makes perfect sense. So, um, I'm the founder of Chaos to Memories. Uh, we have a studio in Chicago where we scan uh, family photos, digitize home movies, organize digital photos. Uh, I love the work that me and my staff do. And what led me to that was uh, I've, I've grown up as a photographer. Ever since I was like in elementary school, I had a dark room in the, in the bathroom at home. I grew up with photography in the family and shooting. Uh, fast forward, I've got a background in graphic design, and then I actually just recently left Adobe, where I worked on the Creative Cloud team um, for tw over 22 years. And so I've got a deep technical background, photography background, and I've got a really peculiar mind for organization and systems and really efficient workflow. So when you've got a client that comes to you with like 7.6 million photographs, for example, it's a real client project. Um, most people find that really overwhelming. I find it pretty exciting. Um, and so we've got a great workflow that we tackle. We, we cover it in the book. We do it in the studio. Um, so that background um, kind of leads me to where we are today. And we're just loving the work that we're doing. Nice, nice. That's, uh, that's great. And, you know, having had that experience, having seen so many different photo collections from different types of photographers, uh, you know, I feel like it probably gives you a, a good kind of foundation to come in with some, you know, a practical take on this, right? It's not purely what you've seen with, you know, 40 year professional photographers, and it's not purely what you've seen with just kind of the casual, you know, suburban parent who's taken photos of their kids at Little League. And that's, you know, you, you've seen yeah. that whole spectrum. Um yeah, that's you know, right. from from film to digital to you know big cameras to to smartphones and more that makes sense so if somebody's going to really get in and get smarter about you know decluttering their photo life uh, what does that take i mean does that involve special software does that involve just you know willpower and time what what's really involved with it <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it it's a good list it involves uh it requires both so what i would say <clears throat> let's talk about motivation so the, um, when I'm not organizing photos, one of my other passions is I'm a long distance runner. And so I run ultra marathons. Um, so not just like 26.2 miles, but 50 or 100 miles. I've done like two and 250 mile hikes. That's kind of my thing for fun. And I, and I mention it only because I think it has a lot of crossover with organizing photos is there are no shortcuts. It's just work. You just got to get it done. So having a clear sense of motivation, like why are you doing this? Whether it's like a milestone event coming up in life, like a graduation or a wedding, mm -hmm. or retirement, something like that. We want to celebrate and remember things. So keeping your, your motivation of why you want to organize your photos, which normally involves like sharing and preserving memories. So I think that's key, but then it is work. And so the number one step, uh, it's no secret. We start every project with gathering. And whether we're talking about old physical photos that you might want to get scanned, or whether that is modern digital photos from your phone, your cameras, your hard drives, your CDs, and all of that stuff. You've got, you know, phase one, and I talk about it in the book, phase one is gathering. Because until you get everything in one place and start to get your arms wrapped around it, you can't even understand the scope, right? It kind of feels intimidating, but at mm -hmm. least just, just size it up. That makes sense. Yeah. And that's a good, uh, you know, a good lead in is that, yeah, you've got to take inventory of what you have before you can start, can start organizing that. And, you know, from there, I know in your book, you know, you talk about, uh, you know, about using Lightroom as your preferred software of choice, you know, I, you know, obviously, and especially if you worked for Adobe for Creative Cloud for, for quite a while, I'm sure you're intimately familiar with that product. Uh, yeah. You know, the reality is, you know, people use different things. I mean, I'm a Lightroom guy myself, but, you know, whether somebody's using, you know, Apple photos or they have folders on their hard drive that they organize some other way with, you know, Bridge or if they're using Capture One or whatever, uh, right. you know, it, it seems to me like, you know, probably the, the process and the mindset is probably more important than the software as long as you know how to use whatever your software of choice is. Is that accurate? 
Yeah, I, I would say two things. One is the, the workflow that we use and teach in the book is um, we reference Lightroom, but it doesn't have to be Lightroom, right? Mm -hmm. The core fundamentals of like gathering, preserving, organizing, using metadata, those are universal and it's not exclusive to Lightroom. The only thing that I would say, um, and sometimes people are surprised by this, is when we're working on a photo um, archive, we're thinking about our immediate client, but we're also thinking longer term. Like when it comes to families, we're thinking of them and their kids and their grandkids. So the catch with some of them, really all of like the free to cheap services, like the cloud services, like Amazon Photos, Google Photos, Apple Photos, mm -hmm. they do some automatic tagging, which is pretty genius. However, it's temporary. Like it only sticks as long as you keep using their service and it's somewhere between difficult and impossible to get the searchable tags out. Right. So that's why we don't use or recommend those services. So you don't have to use Lightroom, but whatever you choose, make sure it supports industry standard metadata that can be burned into your files, embedded in your files, because we know this when we have clients come to us and they bring us really old photos, like from the late 1800s, and it looks like an amazing photograph, but they don't have the story. They don't know who's in it. They don't know when it was taken. Like nobody wrote that on the back of mm -hmm. the photo. Right? Like, like you wish grandma did in the modern digital era, embedded metadata is the equivalent of that. So whatever you use, just make sure you can embed like your keywords, your names and things like that into the files. We think that's important for long-term preservation. Yeah, that makes sense. And that's a great point about how, whether it's Google or Apple or whichever, you know, cloud service or kind of automatic organization system you're using is that they're not really portable. You can move the files, but all that other data, you know, is hard to, if not impossible to move. And that's something where, you know, I've talked a lot about artificial intelligence and photography. I, you know, I actually wrote a book on it. It's somewhere over yeah. here behind my head sitting on the shelf. And you know, one of the things I've talked about is what does the future of metadata look like with AI? Because there's a lot of things that photographers have maybe traditionally manually managed metadata for that AI is starting to be able to figure out. I mean, if we're talking about people recognition, object recognition, things like that, um, some of that is great. But, you know, like you said, you know, let's say hypothetically my entire collection were in Apple Photos and I've trained Apple Photos to identify, oh, this is me, this is my wife, this is my friend, this is my friend's wife. If I move that collection to Google Photos, I have to retrain Google Photos on who those people are. Um, and and this is, needless to say, this is a big project. It's, it, it's oh, right. Tedious, right. It's a lot of work. So we just tell folks, listen, <clears throat> listen, if you're going to do this, just do it once, like do it right. Do it once. Um, if you think it's tedious once, imagine doing it. <laughs> right, you, right. switch, like cloud platforms or phone providers or whatever you want to, yeah, you just want to get that embedded. Right. And I feel like the photo organization space is one where over the last I don't know, 10, 15 years, you know, there, there's the big players that remained, right? Adobe, Google, Apple, yeah. you know, they're they're kind of the stalwarts. They're around. They're not going anywhere anytime soon. We've seen so many startups show up and then in many cases then kind of fizzle out as well with their solutions for organization and things like that. And I feel like I mean, you may have run into this too, but I often run into people, they're like, oh, there's this hot new startup and it's, you know, it's it's a little cheaper than paying for Creative Cloud. And so I'm going to put all my photos there. And it's like, well, yeah, but that solution only lasted them 24 months. And then they're chasing the next super cheap startup solution that's ad supported or something or other. And right. you know, it seems like if your photos are important to you long term, and I think probably anybody who's watching this video would put themselves into that category it makes sense to put some intentional effort into this and to, if needed, spend a few dollars to have the right software to make that solution yeah. more future-proof. Yeah. The other thing that I would say, I agree completely. The other thing I would add about cloud services is we use them, we recommend them, but we think about cloud services as um, access, right? Once I yes. have a yes. gathered, curated, tagged, searchable photo archive, like we recommend uh, most of our clients use SmugMug because it's like mm -hmm. unlimited storage, very reasonable price, and I can access it anywhere and I can search all the standard metadata. But um, if something were to happen at SmugMug, either they go out of business or they raise their prices or I don't like a policy, it's annoying, but it's not catastrophic because right. I was only have to access. 
we have all of our files backed up locally. We deliver all of our files to clients. You know, nobody cares about your photos like you do. Nobody cares about like, you know, my photos like I do. I'm responsible for them. And we just use the cloud services for the Anywhere access. So it kind of lowers the pressure in that way. Yeah, yeah. And that that makes sense. And that I think that's one of the big advantages of these cloud services. It makes it easier to access things. It makes it easier to share things, which is great. You've got it, you know, at your fingertips. It's easy to push stuff to social media, uh, right. but it's not necessarily the you know, kind of the system of record, the archive for your things. And yeah, I'm a, I'm a big smug mug fan as well myself. I'm actually an affiliate partner of them. I I, I can drop a discount code for them down below in the video description for everyone. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so we talked about, you know, getting started is, is gathering and then, you know, your book, obviously, which I would definitely recommend people check out. I mean, I think it's written at a very, it's very approachable. Um, and I, I will admit as I went into it, I'm kind of like, well, I'm like a serious, you know, professional photographer. I mean, I, I use Lightroom already. I think I'm okay with organization, you know, where is this going to be at? And I, I feel like you did a great job of kind of making it where I feel like it's approachable for everybody who's, you know, again, kind of the serious hobbyist up through a pro. Um, what would be, I mean, I guess, what would kind of be a key takeaway or a, a, a key, you know, if you do nothing else, start doing this now tip <laughs> that we could leave folks with here uh, as yeah. we start to wrap up to get them on a better path, um, you know, at least short term until they read through your book and figure out uh, the right long term solution for them. Yeah. So with most clients, they come to us, especially with digital organizing projects, and they say, hey, I want to do this. How much is it going to cost? And I say, well, I don't know. Like if somebody brings in a big box of photos, We've done this enough. I can kind of size it up and say, oh, that's a thousand photos. So that's 5,000 right. photos. I can see them. But when it's digital, I can't see them. So it's hard to estimate. So what we recommend most clients do is let's start with gathering, like I talked about. So we'll gather from computers, cameras, CDs, clouds, all that stuff. Gather it together. And then the other thing, before we can even give a project estimate, we deduplicate. And people are shocked. Mm -hmm. Regular mm -hmm. people say, I don't have any duplicates. And I'm like, I know better, right? Um, right. And so what we do is we deduplicate. And if all you do is gather and deduplicate, that's massive, if that's as far as you get. Because on average, our client, for our clients, we delete 52% of their photos on technical duplicates. And I'm not talking about near duplicates and burst modes and blink, right. I'm talking about just duplicates. And that's that's a huge relief. If you've got everything in one place, easy to back up and then you use something like uh, Adobe Lightroom Classic to like import everything chronologically, that's really fast and automated, that's amazing. So that I would recommend folks start there. Again, we talk about it in the book in detail, but that would be a great start um, to get things pretty sane pretty quickly. That makes sense, yeah. It's it's so easy to come up with those duplicates when you make a, a copy or for social media or a resized version or you know any of that kind of thing, Acc accidentally re-import something. Uh, yep. Good deal. Sweet. So the book is called Declutter Your Photo Life. I guess you've got a copy right there as well. Um, you know, it, it's available, you know, in paper, electronically. Um, where's, you know, where's a great place for people to get it? And I understand you've got a discount code we can give them as well if they want to order uh, directly from the publisher. So what's yeah, the deal absolutely. on that? Yeah. So you should be able to find the book anywhere you normally buy books. Uh, so feel free to snag it locally or online. Um, if you do purchase through Rocky Nook, um, uh, the publisher who's been amazing to work with just at rockynook.com, uh, the upside there is if you use a special code called uh, declutter40, so declutter40, and I know you'll put it in the show notes, mm -hmm. um, that'll be 40% off. Um, it's a great deal. And we are getting feedback from literally all over the world. Uh, not only people reading it, but people doing it, people implementing the work. <laughs> really great feedback. So it's a thrill. Yeah, that's always nice. That's It's rewarding to know that, hey, I'm not just shouting into the void. People are comprehending this and people are seeing the benefit from it. That's that's always the big payoff. Uh, yeah. Great. Yeah. So I will drop links down below in the description to, uh, you know, to Rocky Nook so folks can buy that book. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll drop an Amazon link there as well, because I know a lot of people like that. Um, and uh, I'll also put a link into your business in case somebody, you know, starts looking at this and is like, you know, 
this is a problem I'm just going to pay money and have someone else do a lot of the work on, right? Because I mean, as well, professional well. photographers, like some of times we do that, right? We hire somebody to do some of our retouching or we hire somebody to, you know, in this case, help us, you know, make headway on getting things organized. So um, I will, uh, I'll share that with everyone down below as well. I appreciate your time today, Adam. It was great chatting with you and, and meeting you. And uh, like I said, I, I think based on your background, you're the perfect person to be tackling this subject. And it's it's one that it's only going to get more and more important. Uh, you know, Apple. If I, can, if I remember the stat correctly, we are shooting like one to two trillion photos a year these days uh, globally. And if I remember correctly, that's something like the entire hundred first hundred and fifty years of photography, like in a year, right? Like right. it's just, you look at the chart, it's accelerating like crazy. Nobody, you know, doesn't have this problem, right? On some level, right. it's a challenge. And whether you tackle it, tackle it yourself or you find an, a, an expert you trust to help you tackle it, we, we want to take these photos, but we want, if you can't find them and enjoy them, it's kind of not the point. So, so we encourage people to, to get help or to, you know, get started and uh, hopefully we can be a part of that. Yeah, yeah. Photography has always been important. It's as important as ever. It's easier than ever to make photos. It's easier than ever to end up with so many photos you can't manage them. So, um, you know, on, on behalf of the world, I'm glad that there are people like you that are helping everybody tackle this topic uh, from hobbyist to professional to get things cleaned up. Great. So uh, you can all find the links down below for the things we've chatted about, the services, the book, uh, Adam's business, if you want some help with this uh, directly. And uh, thank you again, Adam, for being here. Uh, it was great to chat with you. Um, and for everybody else, you know, again, thank you for being here. Uh, go and subscribe to the channel. I'll be back at you in a few more days with another conversation. And until then, take care.